And once you recognize that if you're trying to force an effect to change by creating rules and regulations to stop that effect, it's not possible. What you've got to do is deal with and teach cause law. And Jesus made that shift in this statement in the Aramaic language. He didn't talk about effect law, namosa. He talked about cause law, orita. So he said that's the first one. That's the most important one. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor. He named the second object of attention. As thyself. A third object of attention. So what is he saying here? He's saying that you must keep the condition. And in Aramaic, the word love... And there is no word for this or that resembles this in the Greek language. There is no word that resembles this in the English language. We have to put string several words together to try to approximate the Aramaic meaning. But in the Aramaic language, there are 17 different words that have been translated by one English word, love. And the word that was used in this particular situation was the word rachma. And he was talking about the cause of sane behavior. He said, you've got three objects of attention. In, this, the, in Aramaic, this word neighbor is not a physical word, it's a mental word. So when he said you've got to love neighbor, he was saying you've got to keep a condition in your mind called neighbor for anybody that you think about. In Aramaic, neighbor means Anyone you think about, if they come into your mind, they are your neighbor. And if you want to do sane behavior, you must keep the condition of rachma, which is love, within your mind. If you fail that test, if you fail that law, then you will do what you regret. You will do what does not bring you into the highest and best levels of your creative process and your creative potential. This was not some kind of a, a religious philosophy or even a nice philosophy. It is a survival philosophy. Because if you can't do it, you won't survive long. And we think somebody in our culture who lives to be 100 years of age has really survived a long time. But, you know, we're eternal beings. Energy is eternal. And to destroy an eternal energy system in a hundred years left, less is a pretty short lifetime. And you look back in the scriptures and they said there'll come a time when your whole life will become a prayer. And that is that you will be able to step into this space of love for whoever and whatever your object of attention is. And as you're able to do that, everything will change. And then he gives another big clue to how to run a life. The last and perhaps, when we understand it, as important or maybe even more important than this first part of it in our culture at this point for people to grasp and to understand because there is so much misunderstanding about these scriptures. And what he said was, upon these two commandments hang the law. Upon these two Commandments. Hang the. And now we're talking about the actual law, not man's rules and regulation. The law and, and it was a possessive word, its prophets. Prophets. 